Hi everyone, welcome to Art with Lisa. Today we're going to work on sketching buildings with values. I'd love for you to understand how to go further than just line drawings and to incorporate value or shading as some people would call it with your drawing. So today you have some simple supplies, a pencil, you can use a regular 2B pencil or a mechanical pencil, whichever you're most familiar with. I'm going to do some charcoal as I'm working on toned paper. So I have a regular black charcoal, soft charcoal, and a white charcoal pencil. I have something to blend with. This is called a blending tortillon, or you can use a simple household Q-tip, an eraser of some type. This is a kneaded eraser. The name also implies what you're able to do with it. You can knead it and clean it as you work with it, and it kind of self-cleans the graphite or the charcoal out and gives you a clean surface to work with. You can also mold it and shape it into tiny little shapes if you need to go in and do something specific. You'll need a ruler if you would like to use one for measuring. And you can do this on white paper or gray toned paper, whichever you have handy today. So let's get started. We've talked a little bit about values in our drawing classes. And just to give you a quick refresher, what value is, is the difference between light to dark and how light affects the objects that it falls on. So when you're looking at something, you're going in visually and you're deciding where the lightest lights are in a piece and where the darkest darks are. I hammer home all the time to my students that it's so important to know how to draw first, to understand how to execute something correctly, in proportion, in perspective. And once you have those foundations down, you can move into this understanding of value or shading and how to make things look more realistic by understanding how light works, how it hits things, how it's shaded, how it bounces on the inside of things. And as you progress with that, and then you move to color, all of those foundational skills can be incorporated into it. So let's look at some examples of drawing buildings. Architectural drawing is its own art. Amazing, fascinating things. There's, there are still people who do this by hand. Obviously, a lot of things in our world today is done by computer. But for uh, the purposes of understanding architecture, it's great for you to know just how to render these yourself. So this would be considered a simple line drawing of a home. Obviously, you have to know a little bit about perspective and design and how things fit next to each other. All of those things are incorporated here, knowing how that if you're looking at something from the front, it might be a perfect triangle like this. But when you're looking at it from the side, it kind of skews it because this is perspective starting from this viewpoint and then all of the lines would be going back to um, a vanishing point on the horizon. And so one point and two point perspective are things that are incorporated into drawings like this, line only. Here's another one that's a lot more technical, a lot finer lines. You can see all these little hash marks that distinguish that this artist was measuring, measuring, measuring through the whole thing, which is imperative when you're doing pieces like this because architecture is very exact. There's no room for just throwing something in there. If it's going to look exact, all those lines have to go to the same kind of vanishing point as I spoke of before, and they all have to be perfectly symmetrical when they're making an archway or a door or a window. So that's the type of drawing this is. The density of those lines getting closer and closer and closer together right here in this detail area start to give it the feel that it is real, realistic. We're starting to see more what we call values in here, where the darkest darks are put in because the light is being hidden. And this artist did kind of a neat uh, vignette effect where super high, dense line quality and detail right here in the middle. And then as it goes out to the edges, it gets less and less detail until you're just out to the real sketchy quality. So that's kind of a neat um, rendering idea. This one incorporates both. And obviously, again, a very detailed architectural sketch of an old building with lots of detail in it. But we can tell that they started with all the structural lines. They, they 
um, went ahead in the beginning in their initial drawing and got all the perspective correct all of these angles front again this would be two point perspective going back to vanishing lines you can see these would all converge somewhere way back in the background to the same vanishing point circles on the side are also skewed in perspective and as they come closer to you they get wider so lots of understanding about perspective in this drawing but they're also starting to incorporate the values and so we are being told by the way they've rendered this that the light source is coming straight onto the flat front of this building which means there is no direct light coming onto the sides any of the sides of any of those structures now we can tell that this must be quite a bit higher behind this structure because it's fully lit also. So there's no shadows being cast from here onto this structure in the back. The cast shadow from the building is coming out from the corner of the edge and getting less and less distinct as it goes out in a way. When it comes right here to the corner, very precise as we can see it going down these little steps. But as it goes away, that line, that edge gets softer and softer. Also the detail in this drawing on the back side gets less and less, more vague and blurry as it goes to the back, which is the kind of depth of field that our, our natural eye would understand. So again, lots of skills in rendering something like this. Here's another one that is just as convincing, but it's done only with values. Guessing this was computer generated, so the artist went into a computer program, set up all the measurements and uh, planes here that were going to distinguish this as a very simple house, and then they went in with different densities of value and filled in these areas. And we get the idea that the light is coming straight at this wall. This side is getting maybe a little bit of light. It's a, it's a different um, material, so it's maybe a little darker than what was here. Maybe this is just white paint and there's shingles up here. Same on the side of the chimney and a little bit of perspective here to show the angles. All of these angles are parallel, the roof line, the window, the base of the window, the bottom of the house, and again here, the door. So all of these things were sketched in and then just the values added. But we're very convinced that this is a house in the light casting shadow to the side, very darkest on the inside where we can't see. So these are all different samples of architectural drawing. And to have real understanding of all of these would allow you then to go to the next level if you choose to add color. Obviously, this is an art in itself to do pencil, graphite renderings, charcoal of buildings like this with such precision in black and white, beautiful. But if you're a color person and you want to add color, look what you can do by understanding all those principles. For example, here is a field sketch that I did on a traveling um, artist vacation to Croatia. And we were studying some of the old buildings that were done there in stone. So just sitting out there in um, kind of on the sidewalk with my little watercolor sketchbook and because I have the understanding of those things, I was looking at shapes. I, I boxed in my area. I was looking at shapes of the sky, shapes of the building, distinguishing where the perspective would be, which is my front face, where the light was hitting. It was kind of hitting from the side here late afternoon. And then going in and trying to measure. Obviously, there's a lot of measuring when you're doing architecture to get these evenly spaced and how far they are. You're constantly comparing where things are as you're drawing. But with very little detail, you get a convincing rendering of a piece of architecture. Here's another one rendered by another artist. Very simple lines with very loose watercolor, but again, tells the whole story leaves the lightest lights established where the sun is hitting it the brightest on the inside of this door and the tops of this adobe wall. Again, looking at the values, if you were to squint your eyes down, which I tell my students to do often while you're drawing, um, it helps you by narrowing down your own vision, using your eyelashes almost as a filter to color. You can kind of gray things down and see where are my lightest lights and my darkest darks. These are obviously much more moody, loose, but beautifully rendered. And this artist, again, had great understanding of perspective and architecture, but really notice what they're seeing about the lights and the darks 
and everything in between, very softly rendering things in the background. Again, here's another dramatic one, a bright light coming down into a big hall um, tunnel. I'm not sure what this is. It looks like it might be something in Venice with water underneath. And again, another looser rendering, maybe in oil or acrylic, but all of the understandings of architecture, light, and value are evident here. So there's some great examples. We are going to choose a simple piece to do. And today we're gonna to do an adobe structure, the top of an old mission. And I chose this because it's fairly simple, but it, it does cover a lot of the things we're talking about. I'm gonna be drawing on gray toned paper today. So I, um, you may use that or you can just use white paper. And there will be a template that you can print out if you would like to use that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tape my reference paper here. And I always encourage my students to put whatever they are drawing from, whether it's something in life or an image that they're working from, right next to what they're drawing. Because one of the most important principles of drawing is to constantly be looking at what you are drawing. Don't just draw what you know, draw what you see. So the first thing I'm going to do when I go into this picture, mentally, as an artist, I'm breaking it immediately down into shapes. I'm looking that from the top to the bottom here, if I were to half this whole piece, I've got a reference point about the top of this, um, I don't really know what you call this, but it's a steeple kind of at the top of an adobe. So if I break this down into halves, then I understand, well, that's about my halfway point there. If I break it in half this way, I see that um, I'm barely, it's not the inside edge, not quite the inside edge, but pretty close to where half side to side, that's gonna give me a reference point here. Um, I'm looking at the shape of the sky. So when I go in and I start drawing this, I wanna match that shape. I'm looking at shapes within the shapes, which is a, a archway here on the inside. And because we are looking at this from a little bit from the side, it's not a perfect archway. It's, a, it's more of a, like a bent hairpin, and I'll show you that when I start drawing that. And same for the top. Then this would be perfectly parallel as architecture is, the one that goes over the top. I'm also looking at these shapes and where they intersect. I'm looking at light, that this obviously is my lightest lights, and so I'm gonna render those with my white charcoal. I'm going to make the paper this middle range right here, I think. So I will go in and darken around for the sky and anything else. But this middle range right here that I see in value is going to remain just the color of my paper. Now, if you're drawing this on white paper, this would be the white of your paper and everything else would be rendered with your pencil. So let's start by, I'm going to start by actually measuring this area, the actual frame of the picture. And I've got about four and a half by, oh, six, we'll say six and three quarters. So I'm going to draw a square that is the same size on my paper so I know that when I render this and six and three quarters. So I'll go straight down from here. And as I've said before, when I'm teaching my classes, these do not have to be perfectly exact. Um, for the sake of teaching, I do this just so as a student, you, you can do some really um, easy comparisons from one side to the next. And then I'm going to finish out this box knowing what my measurements are. And so now I have the same size frame that I am using as my reference. And I'm gonna put those right next to each other. So when I'm visually measuring or using my ruler to measure, then I have exact uh, things to look at. So when I, like I said, I'm looking at about halfway here. If I were to put just a little halfway sketch across here, that tells me that's right about at the top of this column that's on the steeple. 
Now from here, again, if I half my paper from left to right, it looks to me like I am right on the left edge of the cross. So if I were to half put a halfway mark right down my paper this way, that tells me I'm about right in to the left side of the cross. Um, down here, let's see, I'll, I'll go from, so I've got my line in here, my line in here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and finish that line all the way down the paper. And if I were to take my ruler down and look at it on this side, I would see it almost goes to the left edge of the bell and it intersects all the way down. So those are just things that I'm keeping mentally in my head. That about halfway down here, it's the left side of the cross, almost the left side of the bell. And then halfway here, really that's all the only point that bisects that. So now if I'm going to measure, let's say about two inches down, that's where the top of my archway is. And it's going to go, if I'm measuring from the side to the left edge of this, it's about an inch in. So I'm gonna give myself a little hash mark there. And now I'm measuring the right side to the edge and it's about half an inch. So I will go over and measure about half an inch. Okay. And so I've got the top edge established the left edge established and I can go ahead and draw in my arch like that and circles and curved edges are one of the hardest things to draw so again remember this is just our skeleton that we're putting in here kind of our drafting drawing now from here I can see that this almost bisects this halfway so I want to go I want to measure how wide that pillar is and it's about five eighths inches. So I'm gonna go from that point, which is this point here, and I'm gonna measure on either side of it. Give myself about five eighths, just like I said there. And now remember that any parallel lines, they're all gonna be parallel. Um, these vertical lines that are going down are all going to be straight up and down. So be aware when you're doing your straight up and down lines that you don't start turning things left and right and left and right. You've got a straight line here on the side. Now start using it as you come in. All right. So I saw that my point here, my halfway mark was actually at the top of this. Remember when we measured halfway? that we cut this picture in half, we decided that that bisected just the corner there. So I know that's my corner. So I'm gonna make a straight line down from there. Just sketch that in because I know that's that one. And then like I said, it is 5 eighths inches wide. So I made another line over here. I'm just gonna do another line straight down from that. And I'm just really looking at my distances here to make sure they're even. This is not an exact science. I am not making perfectly architectural sound drawing here. Now um, I'm going to measure the width of this arch, the shadowed one here. And I see that that's about a little over three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna go from that line, measure three quarters of an inch over in a couple places. And then I'll draw a line down from those. Okay, now I'm just going from left to right. Now I'm gonna measure this space where the bell is hanging. And it's also, it's about seven eighths. So from the line I just drew, I'm gonna go over about seven eighths, measure that out. Then I'm gonna measure the inside of the arch. And it's just a little under three quarters. So from that line I just made, three quarters, the width of this side of the steeple, about five eighths again. And then I've gotten all the way to the edge. 
So I know that this line is this archway, okay? This one that we made on the inside of the bill. I'm gonna go up and over, and this is the inside, second little mark that I made. So I'm gonna go up, and again, what I'm looking at here is just the shape of this hairpin. So I'm gonna to try to imitate that. Ooh, I always have a hard time on the right side of an arch. And then I'm going down. Don't be afraid to keep making marks until you think it's getting pretty close. And again, these are just, uh, this is just the beginning here. We're just starting to render this. So don't be too hard on yourself if, if it looks skewed. This is a measuring, uh, definitely a exercise in measuring. Now, because this is, we're kind of looking up at it and it's going away from us, notice all these lines are on a slant, slant, slant and they all are on the same slant. Don't make the top line like this, and then the next one like that, and the next one like that. Big, big thing to understand in architecture is that all of those have to be perfectly parallel, okay? So I see that from here, if I were to draw this line across here, and I don't really wanna mark up my original too much, but now I'm looking at the shape of this triangle okay, that may, that tells me how far down this angle needs to go. So if I draw my straight across line and draw a similar triangle, it's going to give me what that first angle is, okay? So now that I've established that, I'm going to go the other direction, and it's going to go all the way across. So I'm gonna take that line and it's gonna go all the way across and tell me where the other one bisects. So I wanna have a similar shaped triangle on this side. I've got this triangle here. I want a similar triangle on the other side. And I'm going to go all the way across this time. Okay. Now I'm establishing where all of my angles are gonna be, okay? So I'm not gonna do this totally exact for the sake of time. This is a sketch, but we've got basically our, our bones in here. Now, wherever you put these is just kind of up to you. I'm just gonna kind of throw these in. Uh, they're fairly evenly spaced apart and do the same on this side. You could get really technical in measuring all this stuff, but I'm just going to... Now, those lines I could carry all the way across because they match. See, they match over here, so I want them to match also on my piece. So I'm just going to sketch those in to make sure I get them fairly on. Okay, that one's a little narrow. So again, I'm always looking, always comparing what I'm drawing to what I'm looking at. What I'm drawing to what I'm looking at. Don't just get in here and start drawing and forget to look at what you're drawing from. Now, these lines that go the other way are gonna be the same angle as these here. So I can just go in and kind of sketch those at the same angle I might not have done those far enough down. So I'm making a correction right off the top. I need those to go a little further down. Okay. As I said, perspective uh, is a whole nother section. It's a whole nother drawing class for today. We're just wanting to get a general sketch in here. 
All right, now we can tell. So we made this line. Remember when we made this line to show the tops of our two edges there? Let's compare, it's about a half an inch down where that bell bar is hanging. So I'm just gonna pencil that in. And I can see that it bisects this shape right here. This line stops in the middle of this and this. So if I go about a half an inch down and over in the middle between these two lines here, that kind of tells me where that bar is that the bell is hanging on. Okay, now let's look at this last half an arch back here. So basically, it's like this arch that's gotten scooted over, all right? So what I want you to really look at is the light shape on the inside there. Only look at the light, and that's what we're going to draw. So I'm just going to go ahead and sketch that in all the way down. And I've got my basic shape in. Now, just for comparisons, um, I'm noticing that the bottom of the bell bisects this, goes straight into this bottom line. The top edge of the bell starts generally just a little higher than the top edge of here. So I can put a line in there. I know it goes over here. Um, I know it ends a little bit above this bottom piece here, so I can stick catch that in. I can see that it's about a oh, quarter of an inch away from the edge here, so I can sketch that in. So I've just given myself some nice reference points about how to draw this bell in. Now, you would just go in and draw a general bell shape, and that is just done by looking again at the shape. Always looking at shapes. We're looking at shapes for the values, for the light, for the darks, for the edges. Okay, so I'm just doing a general bell shape in here. It's a little narrower than what I'm doing. So very important. I say this all the time to my students. You cannot, doesn't matter how much value or color or detail you put in, if you did not start with a good drawing, you are not going to end up with a good piece. So I'm noticing again that that's about where the top is. And this doesn't have to be exact at this point. We're still just getting a general sketch in. I'm looking at the shape of the top of it. A little bit of a cone coming down into it, and then I will finish the chains later. But that's my basic bell shape. Okay, last line is here at the bottom, and I'm just going to generally sketch that in. It's another roof line that's coming in front of the piece, and there's one more edge down here. It goes a little bit to the right of this long line, so I'm going to go a little further in and then come down to the bottom, and then it just goes to this line. So, last thing I have is the cross at the top, and again, if you want to measure, it's about three quarters of an inch from the top. And remember how we bisected this from left to right. I can see that the line straight down goes on the left side of that cross. So I already have that in. Now I just need to look. Now this cross is not straight at us. Look at these angles. This is an angle at the top. Angles for the cross piece. So I can go ahead and put my front piece in. And I know that it stops about right here and comes down. The front edge is wider. Now, I wanna be sure that I've got angles going on both sides of that, because what I just drew was straight across the top, but I know that this angles to the left and it angles to the right, and immediately we've given perspective to that cross. Made it a little too wide there. 
Okay, same thing with the cross piece. I'm just gonna kind of eye this. I know that it's at an angle. So I'm gonna make it fairly even, like this distance is equal to this distance. It's all the same front face. So I want all those to be even. And then I notice that on the edge, those angles go down again. So like this angle goes down, this one will go down to show the side of it. And because we're looking at it from the bottom, we can see the bottom edge here. So from the corners, we'll go back into this. There we go. And I might have made it a little bit short, but we're going to call it good for today. Okay, so we are ready to start our value study now. So let's begin with, we've got our, our general drawing in, and if you'd like, you can go in and erase any lines that are not necessary at this point. These are just our blueprint lines, for lack of a better word, to kind of tell us where to put things in and where lines are gonna intersect. If, you, if that was a little fast for you, feel free to stop and pause Catch up here before you go on to the shading. No problem with that. And then you are going to really start looking at the shapes of the shadows, which is what we're going to do here. So from the very beginning, I'm going to start in with my charcoal, and I'm going to make this kind of a mid-range. I know that I want to leave this front face here is just going to be the color of the paper. So I know what's behind it has to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to go in, and as we've talked about in some of the drawing classes that I've done, if you've taken any of my beginning drawing classes, a great way to do shading in large areas is an overhand um, hold on your charcoal. So you can go back and forth, and you're getting to use more surface area of your charcoal or your pencil, whichever you're using today. So I'm going to go in here very lightly. I don't want to I don't want to apply a lot of pressure because remember I want to save my darkest darks. Like if I squint down, I can see that these pieces of wood are a little bit darker than the sky and down here the shadows even darker and then the bell is the darkest. So from the very beginning, I want to stay watching how um I want to be looking at those values from the very beginning and remembering where they need to stay. So I'm going to go in and erase a little more off this cross. So I just barely have the impression of it to work with. My edges here. What we're really wanting this to look like in the end is just a value study, no lines really showing. So I will continue with my charcoal. And don't worry if you go over the edges here. You can always go in and clean edges up with an eraser after you're finished. But I would recommend that you keep the direction of your strokes fairly similar throughout this whole time here. So we go in and we are just very lightly establishing a sh value darker than the paper itself on the back here. Now, I didn't really establish these edges that go out. That detail on those goes out. And the angle actually goes down because it goes behind. So that's what the shape should look like on the outside edge here. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going all the way down to the bottom. And this sky, it's kind of an optical illusion. Where the sky is against the whitest white looks darker than it is over here, but it's actually the same. And the reason it looks like that is just an optical illusion because the values are so close to each other here on the front of the building and the sky, it almost makes it look lighter over here. It's just the high contrast here against this white that makes it look darker over here, but it's actually the same value sky all the way around this steeple. So I'm just gonna go in very lightly all the way around this edge, the edge of the cross here. And again, like I said before, if you go over the lines, it's okay, you can go back in with that kneaded eraser and really mold it down to a very fine point to do detail erasing if you need to. So I am making this uniform all the way around. And this actually goes all the way down the edge here. The sky does. So one trick for blending when you're using charcoal or graphite is every once in a while to change the direction of your stroke. So if you were to go back over this at more of an angle, you start to get a natural blend with the graphite laying on the paper. I'm gonna go in after this with my blending tortillon and just really smooth that out. But I am just wanting to blend a little more on the paper. And you can tell I just have a super light hold like my pencil is really loose in my hand. So I just barely have any pressure on this at this point. And I'm just wanting to be sure that my gradation is very uniform all the way across. I'm not applying more pressure anywhere because this sky is very uniform. So I would go back in with my blending tortillon or my Q-tip at this point and just start to go back and forth over it and really blend it, work it into the paper. Now, you will also see when you are using graphite or anything like this, that if you have anything underneath your paper and you start to do this, it will be like an embossing. You will see the texture of your tabletop or if you have something laying under your paper, you'll start to see that when you do a harder pressure like this. So I'm going around the cross. And when you're blending, the direction of your utensil doesn't matter as much because you're really just working the graphite down into the paper at this point. So I'm, I can do circular motion or I can do a directional motion. I just wanna, now I'm just kind of I'm going to start using artistic license to see what exactly I like, how I want it to look. The harder you press, the more it's going to um, blend it, and the paper you're using will respond differently. So this is just the fun part of just experimenting with your supplies, with your paper, with your charcoal, and getting familiar with your tools. So I'm going back in here. And now I can see that I am a value darker than the paper itself. So I, you just wanna be sure that that's what you're seeing at this point. Okay, so we've gone very uniformly over all that background. Establish this. You can see I'm getting kind of loosey-goosey around my edges, but I can clean those back up with my eraser. And I'm getting a nice, even blend on the background. Now, we can also see the sky on the inside of this art, so I need to go in and be sure that I finish that also. 
And it wouldn't matter if I go over the bell because the bell is gonna be even darker in the end. I do wanna finish out these edges because these go behind the bell. These stick out a little ways from I'm looking back and forth here and making sure that I have all, I'm looking at the shape here and making sure I have everything established as it is on the inside of that shape. Okay, and then I can go back in and finish my shading here. And then I will do the same with my tortillon. I want to be pretty precise on the edges of those lines if I can be, just on the inside of that archway. You don't want to totally go over your bell. You don't want to lose your drawing, so you have to draw it over again. But I would go around it at this point. Okay, so now we've got the sky pretty much blocked in. All right, now what I like to do is go now to my lightest light and establish that. And then I've got, then I can judge both ways um, when I need to get darker and when I need to stay lighter. So I'm going to go in now and establish where my lightest lights are and go ahead and put those in, and then I can use them as part of my map. So I'm, I'm working, I'm looking at this shape right now, the top of this archway. And I'm just going back in over it, whoops, with my line, and establishing that. Again, I need to erase those lines a little bit. White charcoal doesn't like to go over pencil very well, so if you drew that in with pencil, you might want to make sure you've really lightened it before you start drawing over it. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in with that white charcoal and establish that really bright highlight. And right away, we're giving our eye information about where the light source is coming from and how realistic this is going to look from the beginning. Okay, now I also see that on this actual photo, it's so bright on this side that you can almost not even see where the edge is here. So I'll go in and again, I'm looking at shapes. I'm going to draw this top square or kind of rectangle. and I'm going to fill that in. There's one shape. Now there's another shape right below it that is the trim. I'm assuming those are pieces of wood that are in the adobe. So I'm drawing that shape. Then I see there's a bit of a shadow and then below that, I'm gonna draw the next shape of pure white. And again, these are not gonna be perfectly rendered architecturally as you're seeing, but this lesson is really just about seeing shapes in values. Then I see there's another rectangle of shadow underneath this, but I'll go ahead and put that piece of trim in. Then there's a gray value underneath it. And my last shape is down here at the bottom. And then another one that comes from the border of the piece. So I've got all my white shapes. Now I'm going to put just that little bit of highlight on this side. So I'm going to start from the bottom over here and with my white shape, draw it in first. At the very base, it goes to the edge of that arch. Then I've got a gray shadow. Then it comes up to that piece of trim. 
and I'm measuring like this is going to be its own arch. And I'm just going to kind of pencil that in lightly so I know generally where it goes, very lightly. So if you will notice, when the light hits it, it moves in on the wood and then goes back out to the, pil to the pillar itself and then in on the wood and then back out. And that tells us that these pieces of wood stick out from the building. If you were to put them all straight on there, it would look like part of the building. But because the shadow moves when it gets to that wood, it tells us, oh, that is out and away from the building. So now I'm looking at this shape above here. And that's the shape I'm drawing. Always looking at the shapes of my values as I draw them in. And I go up, it moves in again on the wood. There's a little bit of a gray shadow underneath there. I'm gonna leave that. This bisects right into the bell. So that's a good measuring point there. Then it goes straight up, it goes back again on the wall and then up to the top. And on the inside of the archway. So as you can see, now I've just drawn the shapes of the white. And lots of observation there about where the light moved and where it bisected shadows. So I'm gonna do the same on the cross now at the top. I'm looking at the shape of the white on the bottom of the cross, and it's a long triangle. Then it comes up underneath the base there. And this is where you can almost get away with not knowing perspective by just being really observant about shape. If you are literally just drawing the shapes of things here, you are gonna turn out something that's fairly on point. So just by doing the mid-range values and the lightest lights, we are already rendering a pretty convincing drawing of this chapel. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill these in. And I'm going pretty fast just for the sake of time, so this isn't a three-hour class. If I were doing this for a customer, I would obviously be taking much more time. Today, we just want to cover the basics about seeing these shapes and blocking them in, showing you how to draw a building. This is a simple one, but the more you practice, I would encourage you to find either some more pictures in your own photos or online or go out and take some photos of really simple shadows and light around you, whether it's a sidewalk or the side of a building or a house, um, fence line, anything. Just start to study light and shadow on objects that are very simple architectural shapes. Okay, so we just about got all the highlights in here. Got them all drawn in. I'm looking back and forth to double check where I put things, make sure that I've got them in the right places. And now I'm going to do my darkest dark to establish that. And that is this little pole up here that's holding the bell. I know, I see that it goes past that shadow so I'm comparing again, almost to the middle of that edge there. Whoops, that one was a little far. And it's a rounded edge, and then I'm just filling that in. Okay, then my bell, general shape of it with the charcoal.
And again, I'm just looking at shapes, like the top of this is kind of a long thimble shape, and then it comes down. I know that the base of it is actually an oval like this, but all we're really seeing is the back side of the oval. So I'm putting that in. And if you look very closely at this photo, you'll see that you can just very, very vaguely see the edges of this. So I wouldn't go in and just make this solid black here. There is a tiny bit of definition to the bell that would make it a little more convincing to put in. And then the little bell itself hanging down. Okay, then I'll go back in with my tortillon and blend that in. And you can see I'm leaving just a little bit of a highlight around the rim of that bell just to give it some dimension. And once you've gotten quite a bit of graphite on your tortillon or your blending tool, you can actually go in and draw with it. You can see that you actually have, um, you can sketch with it because you've got so much graphite on there that it becomes its own tool. So I could go in and put the shape of that on the top. Then there's a little bit down the middle here. And then chains just going up. And you don't have to draw every single chain. Just every once in a while give a little um, suggestion of a link. Again, that's a, a great tool understanding and drawing is you don't have to put every single detail in. Just suggest that it's there. All right. Now I've got my lightest lights, my darkest darks, mid-range value. I know that the paper is this value here, maybe, or I don't know. Now that we're here, I'm going to go ahead and put these darker pieces of wood in, and then we'll see where we stand on the values, and we can decide from there. But now we've got a little bit darker, and we know that these, if you squint your eyes down and look at this paper, these pieces of wood are a little bit darker than the sky. So that's what you're gonna base your pressure on now. You don't want them to be as dark as the bell, but you do want them to be a little darker than the sky. So let's go in and add these pieces. They go all, with, all the way to the edge, it looks like. Disappear off the page. This line I'm going to go ahead and put in, that's the roof line. I've got my lines established where the shadow ended there. And they're pretty even on the left and right side of that corner. So I'm looking at that. I kind of went over the edge of this here, lost my edge. Now, I do see that this is darker down here where it bisects or intersects the roof line as it goes up, that value kind of changes. So I'm gonna go in here and add that value. And I would say it's about as dark as that wood. It's not as dark as the bell, but it is darker. than the paper. 
and you can see a difference between the sky and this piece. So that's your gauge point here at the bottom is that you can see a difference between your sky behind it and as you go up the side. But it's lighter than the wood. So by the time you get up there to that wood, be sure that it's lighter. It's a definite gradation that goes from this corner here up to the, shape, the color of the paper. Okay, now when we look from here, this side of the structure and the sky, it's almost the same color. So that tells me I can go maybe a little bit in with this. Um, I want this to almost match the sky behind it at this point. So I'm going to go a little bit further up with this. But up here is lighter than the sky. So as I'm going up, I'm decreasing the pressure a little bit more until I get almost to nothing. Because by the time I get up here, I want it to be lighter here than on the sky. All right? Now, when we go from here to here, it's quite a bit lighter. So I want to distinguish between the front face of this and what's on the inside of here. I think I'll have to do that with the white again. So I'm gonna go in and establish that curve and very lightly, I'm just going to follow. I want this, see how this is even almost till you get over to here and then it gets a little narrower on the other side. So I'm gauging my space between here and here, the outside edge and this. And as I get over to this side, it's gonna get a little bit narrower and then it comes down. Okay, so I'm going to lighten this just a tad on the inside. This is reflected light coming up from here up to the top of that arch because we know the sun can't bend around to the bottom of that arch. So this is reflected light that we're seeing here. Now I'm judging that it's definitely contrast between here and here, but by the time it gets down here, it cannot be as light as this highlight. So that's what I'm looking at as I draw. It's lighter than this edge, and I wanna be sure that I'm noticing that all the way down, but when it gets down to that highlight, it cannot be as light. Okay, so we're making progress here. I also am noticing that this highlight goes all the way down and it's lighter than this edge. So this edge needs to be distinguishable across this corner, around this corner. So I'm gonna carry just the slightest bit of highlight all the way down to the bottom on the inside of this archway. because I want you to be able to see a difference at the corner. And I'm also noticing at the bottom there that this is almost the same color as the wood. So I can go back in, that tells me I can go back in, I need to go up a little higher there. And I can darken that in on this the edge of this. So I'm gonna establish this as the edge and I can go back in here just very lightly. It's not quite as dark, but it's fairly close. And same thing as I'm going up here. You cannot even see the difference between where the building ends and the sky begins over here. So on this back side, I can go in very, very lightly and almost make them even between the sky and the side of this building. And so you're kind of seeing a little bit of gradation on the building face from the bottom here where it's darkest, where the shadow's not reaching it. And I'm gonna go in now with my tortillon and blend that in. Kind of blend it all smooth. And then go up and I can kind of clean up those edges as I'm doing this. Coming up the side here.
coming up to the wood. I'm going to go ahead and go just to the wall. I'm going to skip the wood while I'm blending here. Because it's almost the same color as the sky there. So that's a disappearing line. Great tool used by a lot of artists in rendering things. Soft edges, disappearing lines all make for very convincing, realistic renderings. So you're seeing a gradation from dark, dark down here, shadow where it comes close to the building, and then lightning as it goes up and more light is reflected onto the actual face until it gets up here. And then it just becomes really almost the color of the paper. So I'm just very lightly blending it out till we cannot even see it. And it's almost the same color as the sky. Then over here, I want to go back in and establish this edge on the side of the archway. And I'll have to clean that up with an eraser because I kind of got messy with my blending over here. It's a fun part about working kind of in the negative is you can go back and erase things out and get a little bit of highlight back. So we are getting closer. Um, I also am seeing I need a little more definition in the cross itself there. Now, what I'm seeing here, if I squint my eyes down, it's almost the same color as the sky. So it's kind of hard to distinguish that or separate it. So what I need to do is go back in here and just really clean up the line edges around them. So without going in and putting hard edge lines in, I also see I forgot to put the highlight on the bottom of that cross there, which helps tell the rest of the story. That we're seeing the bottom edge of it because we're looking up from the ground at this. I'm gonna sharpen my charcoal here in a pencil sharpener. You can also use uh, sandpaper to sharpen your charcoal, and it's a great method to get a real fine edge. These are sandpaper um, paddles that come sometimes with the drawing kits. And the way you do that is just keep it completely on the side and moving it, kind of sanding it off until you get a real fine point. And what I'm going to do in there is I'm noticing that very, very light edge that goes up and over the top. And I just want to go ahead and put that in. And then along the top of the cross also, I see just the slightest highlights that kind of delineate where the edges are. So I want to go in and put those in. Oops. I got a really fine edge and it just broke on me, but that's okay. And... I see I did not follow the exact shadow like it should have been. I see a triangle under underneath here of a little bit less light. So the white white is a long narrow triangle that comes down just on the edge. Doesn't actually go all the way underneath there. Okay, and I may darken it just the tiniest bit alongside the edge of the white, just for some contrast. And then I can go in and blend that out. But just so we really define the edges of this cross, I'm going in with this just on the edge, and then I can go back in with my tortillon and blend that out. I don't wanna see those hard edge lines, so I'm gonna go in and soften any of those lines that I just put. And I'm gonna actually do that along all of these edges that go to the white 
just very, very light and not solid, but just some broken edges there that kind of show right where those hard edges end. And then I go back in and soften them up with the tortillon. Also underneath here, I'm just kind of going back in and establishing edges, bottom lip under the wood. Now, be careful when you're doing charcoal that the edge of your hand doesn't get so saturated with graphite that you start smearing things. It's something to be aware of. And a lot of times I tell people to put a piece, uh, clean sheet of paper underneath their hand when they're working to kind of protect your hand from smearing everything. Tiny little bit of a triangle under there where it goes back around the edge of the building. And I'm comparing values all the time. Is this darker than this? Is this darker than this? Is this lighter than this? All the way around. I'm constantly comparing those. Angle here on the shadow. Angle. And then the shadow comes back. And down. Just looking at shapes again now. Shapes of the wood, shapes of the shadows underneath the wood. Because we're looking at the underside of these beams, we can actually see just a little bit of dark underneath them. Hopefully you're seeing all these things also. The inside of the archway here, there's a little bit of definition that it's darker where the sky is, so I want to make that defined. And then I can go in any with any of these and soften it up with the tortillon. I'm just kind of barely sketching some of those lines in to kind of tell that story. And I grab my blender and I kind of go back in anywhere that I put a line and just soften the edge of it. So there's just really high contrast light against shadow there. Anywhere I put a hard line in, I want to go back in and just really break it up so I don't see a hard edge. I want this to just be values only that I'm seeing here. And remember, constantly comparing. Did I go too light, too dark? I went a bit dark on these pieces of wood. I don't mind it so much. Uh, from a drawing standpoint, but as if I were wanting to exactly render what I'm seeing on the photo, then I've gone a bit dark. But here is where you can start to take artistic license and say, I like that contrast. I like it a little bit darker. I'm going to leave that, or I need to back off a little bit and make that not quite so aggressive. So I'm just going back in here where I put any of those edges. Now remember that sky was pretty uniform all the way behind it, so we don't want to get too wild with changing the color of the sky on the inside of the arch from what it is on the outside of the arch. Because it's very uniform in the background.
Just going back and blending over anything that didn't get blended so it's all uniform. And I'm not seeing any sketch marks from my charcoal at this point. And then this bottom piece here is just kind of a mid-range. And I'm just pulling some of the color out from those real dark darks right next to it. Going to nothing. Okay, so I've given a little more drama to this than what is in the painting or in the photograph. Um, I've bumped up some of the gradations. I've maybe darkened a little deeper than what we're seeing in the photo. But for the most part, uh, when you squint, this is the test. When you squint down, are you seeing the same thing? When I squint, I'm seeing that I stayed pretty true on the edges of the buildings, the lights and the darks. My wood is a little bit darker. Um, I'm going to say I like it. Um, this is, again, where I said you could take artistic license. If I'm going to try to be exact, I would go in and lighten those up a little bit so they weren't quite so dark. Um, so I can do that here. Another great trick is to take a photo of your these two together. Like, take a screenshot with your phone of them right next to each other. And there's an amazing phenomenon that somehow when we take an image of what we've been working on and look at it from a different vantage point, sometimes things just really jump out at us and we see, oh, we're way off on values or we're way off on perspective. So it's why a lot of artists use a mirror in their studio to look at things um, backwards. And sometimes when you compare things from a different perspective, um, this is exactly what jumps out at you. I have the wrong shape or I did the wrong, um, that's not the right value. This is actually a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and lighten this up here. It is a roof line and it is also getting the sun. It's made out of a different material, I would guess, but in this photo, it is lighter. So I'm going back in here and adding that at the end. Anyway, so there you have it. A lesson on drawing a building with values. And I hope you have learned something in this lesson. I hope this was a fun one for you. Um, again, it did not have to be an exact drawing. If you have just learned how to see the shapes in the values, then we have succeeded. And that's what I really wanted you to see at the end of this lesson, uh, be able to use as you go forward in your drawing and notice as you're walking around buildings or downtown or on your farm or ranch or um, anywhere that you are um, starting to see things differently. Um, that's the forever journey of being an artist. And I hope that each of these lessons is helping you understand and have a different perspective because ultimately becoming an artist is much less um, what you were born with than how you have trained your eyes to see. And that's what we're hoping you will learn in these lessons. This was another fun lesson on values. And we're happy to have you here with Art with Lisa. Hope you'll join us again and share your work with us. We always love to see what our students